here. streaming there we go what's up let me see sound on check okay we got sound on too what's up guys uh so apparently naomi was found and i'm gonna read the confirmation uh just get myself together here Got a bunch of people messaging me. Um, Let's fix this stuff here. What's up? Welcome. The kind of stop here. Uh, I'm going to give it a second for people to join up while I fix this a little bit. I wonder if this guy could still bail out. The court document, Nanny, you're talking about, oh, no, not Nanny, sorry. Christina, are you talking about with regards to Troy with uh, what he did back then? Let me just fix myself. All right, I guess we'll start here. Um, so this is from the Churchill County Sheriff's Office, a joint press release. It says, Churchill County Sheriff's Office, Lyon County Sheriff's Office, March 30th, 2022. On Tuesday, March 29, 2022, so this happened yesterday, investigators from the Churchill County Sheriff's Office, along with a detective from the Lyon County Sheriff's Office, responded to a remote part of Churchill County following a tip regarding the disappearance of Naomi, their investigative actions led them to a possible grave site. Washoe County Sheriff's Office Forensic Investigative Services team was contacted and responded to assist in processing the scene. The body of an adult Caucasian female was recovered from the grave site. The body was transported to Washoe County Medical Examiner's Office for an autopsy and took a firm identification. On March 30th, 2022, the remains were confirmed today as Naomi the family has been notified no further information can be released at this time as this is still an open and active investigation we would like to extend our sympathy and condolences to the Irian family and thank all the volunteers for their hard work in trying to find Naomi and bring closure to the family the Churchill County Sheriff's Office and the Lyon County Sheriff's Office will continue to work closely on these cases Um, there's a couple other things too. Uh, so yeah, definitely, you know, condolences to the family, uh, and friends and anybody that knew her. Let 
Brian Anton posted, Naomi remains have been discovered in the Churchill County, Nevada. The sheriff's office says the remains were found in a remote part of the county. They say investigative actions led them to the grave site. I'm going to play this little portion of the clip that News Nation posted. Kind of still getting myself situated. I'm going to try to pull up on the map, too. I mean, they didn't give a specific area, but. Hmm, where was she found? Anywhere near the locations? Uh, that's what I'm going to try to pull up. I'm going to take a look at that. Uh, let me play this. I'm going to be right back in one second. It's kind of cold over here. You were booked on the felony charge of kidnapping in the first degree. Troy Driver stared straight ahead as a judge charged him with kidnapping 18-year-old Naomi Erion. Her family emotional and right in the front row of the courtroom. We're in shock, honestly. We're, we're all in shock right now. Naomi was kidnapped from this Walmart parking lot in Fernley, Nevada, two and a half weeks ago. Her father is a U.S. diplomat, and she lived all over the world before moving to Fernley to live with her brother. The judge set driver's bond at $750,000, but he'd only need to pay 15% of that to get out of jail. Mm -hmm. Naomi's family is concerned someone could hurt him or he could hurt himself. The family would like to convey, again, the importance of Troy Driver's safety. In this time, he's the only one that can help us bring Naomi home. He's the only one that we know about. So far, all indications are driver is not talking to police. Naomi's abduction has web sleuths from all over the world looking for clues. Her family is hoping someone may have caught driver's truck or Naomi's car on camera around the time she disappeared on March 12th. They have hope that she's still alive. If your dash cam footage is still there, um, it would mean the world to this family if you could help save a girl's life and look through it. Just, just to see if you see my sister's car for those first three days or if you see the truck for any period of time in the past month even. And there really is concern uh, that he could be getting out of jail soon. If he does, the judge said he will be required to wear a GPS monitor. Ruta Bay. How crazy if it gets out, huh? So uh, let me take a quick look. Churchill County, we, we don't know specifically where, but at least we're in Churchill, but at least we can get like some sort of um, idea. And we'll be back tomorrow too. This is just kind of just popping in for the update. So you can see like this is Fernley over here, which kind of falls outside. This is where the Walmart was at or is, I should say. This is where the abduction took place. Reno is to the left. That's Reno. So this county here is to the right. This um, Churchill County. This is by, this encompasses Fallon. This is where the vehicle was found and supposedly the arrest of one of the articles. This also encompasses, let me see. Mountains here. I don't know, they said a remote site. Let me look up something real quick. Mm. 
Eureka. Oh, awesome. Okay. So to me, this kind of leaves out the area with the mines and stuff that the guy was looking at. The mines and stuff that this guy was talking about was all the way over here. Eureka. The, I'm talking about the co-worker. I'm, I'm sure so. Yeah, I see you guys talking about that. I, I was wondering the same thing. Uh, so it, it's out of that zone. Eureka's all the way over here. This is the Ace Hardware store that we were talking about. Well, that the co-worker was mentioning. Down here is one of the mines. And then up to the north was the gold bar mine. So this county is not there. It is all remote. That's true. Icarus said. He said evidence. Um, Brian Enton says Naomi's remains have been discovered in Churchill County, Nevada. Well, he said, yeah, you're right. You're right. Uh, who the law? You're right about that. I got you now. The guy did say evidence. He didn't say like a body or something like that. That's true. So who knows? Maybe things can be scattered. Uh, the sister too posted. She's been, she posted 44 minutes ago. This is the worst day of my life. Um, planning on staying in Nevada for the proceedings. And she posted this picture. Love you forever. Oh, the other thing too, I was going to, this Troy driver thing, let's, uh, I guess I can read that too right here. So I wonder if this guy's going to start talking or he's still going to keep quiet. Troy. This is kind of eerie too, reading this document. Uh, Nerdy posted this, and there was a news organization that I saw post this as well. And this is a uh, <clears throat> state of Nevada versus Troy Driver criminal complaint. Comes now plaintiff state of Nevada by the by and through Stephen B. Rye, Lyon County District Attorney, and Samantha Edmundo, Deputy District Attorney, and hereby verifies and declares upon information and belief and under penalty of perjury. That Troy E. Driver, the defendant above named, has committed the following crimes. So again, this is from. Oh, this is today, right? Filed today. Oh, okay. I thought this was the whole thing. That on March 12, 2021, in the Canal Township of Lyon County, State of Nevada, defendant did willfully seize, confine, and vigil, entice, decoy, abduct, conceal, kidnap, or carry away a person by any means whatsoever with the intent to hold or detain or who holds or detains the person for ransom or reward or for the purpose of committing sexual assault, extortion or robbery upon or from the person or for the purpose of killing the person or inflicting substantial bodily harm upon the person or to exact from relatives, friends, or any other person, any money or valuable thing for the return or disposition of the kidnapped person. To wit, defendant did abduct Naomi and did hold or detain her for, let me get the second page. the purpose of committing sexual assault which is horrible despicable and or for the purpose of killing her all of which occurred near 150 50 east newlands drive fernley land county nevada all of which is contrary to the form of statute in such cases made and provided and against the peace and dignity of the state of nevada complaint and praise 
that a summons and or warrant be issued and that said defendant be dealt with according to the law. I declare under penalty of perjury under the law of the state of Nevada that the foregoing is true and correct. Dated this 30th day of March, 2022. This from the district attorney. Uh, evasive snail. Thank you for uh, the members chat. So this is so sad and the ending none of us wanted. Let's hope law enforcement can nail this monster and give him the ultimate punishment. Thoughts with the family. Terry, thank you for the members chat. Uh, man, Mel, this breaks me. There are too many monsters in this world. Thank you for covering this with grace and respect. May Naomi rest in peace. Yeah, man. Crazy. Um, yeah, it's a, uh, it's unfortunate. It's just sad news, man. I mean, I don't, I don't know what else to say, right? They, I wonder if they could, could they revoke the bond? I've seen it in other cases that it was done. I, I mean, I don't know. Hey, Diamond. Diamond says, just heard the news. Rest in peace, beautiful Naomi. Prayers to her family. This is absolutely awful. Troy can rot for an eternity. Carol in the members chat says, hey, my heart breaks for her family. My heart breaks for her families. Was hoping for a better outcome. There was a lot of people that were just hoping, you know, maybe he just, you know, she was somewhere kind of, you know, maybe locked up or something. She was going to be found, maybe wandering or something. That address? Well, let's check it out. Yeah, let's take a look at that. You're right. Uh, let's double. I think that's the Walmart, but let's let's double check. I'm pretty sure that's the Walmart. Uh, yeah. Mm, yeah. Let me put it in here. The Churchill County and to the left of Walmart, zoom in to the Walmart. remote part of the county so i'm sure they're not going to say what part i guess not for now anyway That's true. Somebody here, beautiful, messy ball says the bomb was set earlier today. That was set earlier today was just for the charge of kidnapping. There will be another arraignment with updated charges and bonds. And they could update stuff. And I wonder too. said it didn't it say it was a tip following a tip i wonder what tip it was that uh led them there like who who yeah. of course I mean, they don't have to come forward or anything of course but i'm just wondering uh how, how how did this person know did somebody just walk across this this site and especially if it's a remote site how did this person know about that site 
uh lindsay thank you for the super chat lindsay says mel thanks for taking the time to go live myself and others are grateful for you as a whole oh thanks i uh, appreciate it thank you to all the people that reached out dms and discord we're on discord by the way if you guys want to check us out on there anybody's welcome to join there's rules but uh you know everybody's welcome to join and it's like a little community somebody said bond has been revoked has it what i haven't heard about that maybe it will be but uh let me see Let me check these other articles, see if they provide any. I mean, I'm sure they're not going to provide more than remote area, Churchill County. Investigators were sent to the area based on a tip. DNA evidence was collected from the scene. DNA evidence collected from the scene was determined that it was Erion's on Wednesday. We got that press release. Yeah. Prosecutors let the defendant did abduct Naomi and did hold to detain her for the purpose of committing sexual assault. Hmm. And so the pretrial is April 5th, 10 a.m. Or one of the, the next hearing, I should say. 10 a.m. Yeah, so I don't know, man. Mama four, thank you, Mel, for this terrible. Uh, thank you, Mel. This is terrible news. I'm praying for the family. Thanks, uh, Mama four, for the super chat. Yeah, the date was cleared. The date wasn't on, um, but her date from Sunday was cleared. That date was like on a Friday, I thought, wasn't it? Because um, uh, March 12th was a Saturday. And the day before is when she went on a date, and that would have been Friday. But Friday, she went to sleep early, or she got home and went to sleep early, from what I remember. Thank you, Gigi. Appreciate it. There's a video Mel showed earlier. He was stalking another woman. Yeah, yeah, we looked at that. I was wondering, um, somebody was asking me where the rest of that video is. That's all that lady posted. Um, shit. I mean, who knows if he's done this before? I 
could do calls too, but I just I don't know. I don't know what el- what else right now because there's so little that's come out besides bad news. Can you show a map where her cell phone ping lasts? Yeah, I can do that. Michelle, thank you for the super chat or the sticker. Appreciate it. That's a good idea. That's a great idea, actually. Check where her cell phone last pinged. I can check that out. Let's see. Uh, Mm, let's see but I, that cell phone ping i don't think it was in that county either i think it was towards it, it was like between reno and uh now i forget the name fernley i don't know if that's maybe i don't know maybe he turned it off as he was that's when he realized he had the phone or the phone was in the vehicle or Make sure I get the correct intersection. Okay. I had the intersection before. Okay, here it is. I need to save this location. <laughs> Let me save it on my thing. Okay. So state route 20, 427. And Hill Ranch Road. Yeah, the foam ping pass uh, Fernley a little bit right outside. I mean, I don't know. This might still be considered Fernley, but it was. Yeah, no idea why her phone would have pinged there. You know, I don't know if he just was driving away, discarding stuff. Let's see what you guys in the chat are saying. Uh, Does anybody know where she was found? She was found in this uh, county. Churchill County in a remote location, but they didn't say specifically where. Look at the Alcorn Road. That's where he was located. Okay. Uh, The Alcorn Road. That's where they found the truck. Um, I thought they said some reports. Let's see. The location you're talking about. At a home off Alcorn Road in Fallon. So Fallon is in the county. Fallon is considered in this in this Alcorn area. It would be considered. Let me see. Is Fallon? Fallon, Nevada. Maybe I should call one of the local people. They could tell me, yeah, Fallon is a city in Churchill County. 
So the address where the vehicle is found is the same county where the body was found, though they said a remote location. So the, the, sorry, the truck was found, right? So the truck was found somewhere on this road here or was towed from here. And then the county. So this is Fallon right here. So it's in the same county. Uh, Brandy says, thank you for the super chat. I'm sure this has torn you up. Please take some time to process. Thank you for taking on this heartbreaking news so compassionately. Sister Sherry, we have a community of folks here that really care. Hugs and tears. Uh, thank you guys. I mean, I, I don't know. I, 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 knew, I had a feeling the outcome wasn't gonna be good. You know, I was trying to, I was hoping, you know, because the family was hoping, but they were, they were doing a lot. The family was really like hitting the media, all the different uh, avenues of social media and channels and news and. Twitter, Facebook. Oh, Michelle, thank you for the super chat. I hope you're doing good. Thank you for calling earlier. So I don't know. It's definitely. I mean, right now to, to even say where exactly it would be speculating, but this is just the county right here, Churchill County which encompasses Fallon, which is where the vehicle is found on Alcorn Road. Um, but it doesn't encompass those mines, though, where the guy said he believes evidence was being tossed. So who knows? Maybe, maybe by tomorrow we'll know more of a location. I'm sure for now because of the investigation. Plus, you got to think this guy's locked up and he still hasn't, to my knowledge, he hasn't talked. So they're, they're probably not going to want to, you know, and his attorney's out there watching. And so they're probably not going to reveal a lot of things yet. They're probably going to take their time because now they just want to protect the integrity, I'm assuming, to get information from this guy to charge this guy. I-80 serial killer. Was there I-80 serial killer? Imagine that if this guy's linked to other, like, murders i mean we know the the 1997 one i guess where he was accessory to a murder but um he hasn't like bonded out like he hasn't bailed out but he would have to pay i forgot the amount was it a hundred and something a hundred and twenty thousand or something like that uh brian enton said earlier mm. well he just said in the video we watched too but okay there it is a hundred and twelve thousand dollars a hundred and twelve 500 I-80 killer yeah we watched the co-worker a couple of times the co-worker was on today he was uh after we ended the live stream he was he did several videos back to back talking about the whole situation um I don't know what's gonna happen with that with, with him and that company oh let me tell you guys this real quick some interesting messages and I got to get back to these people too. Let me, okay. I'm going to tell you these two messages and keep it anonymous. Okay. There's one. Let me just pull up the other one. Uh, 
Um, here it is. Okay. So with one, uh, I guess let me get a close up. We can kind of chill here. So with this one, it says, somebody said, thank you for putting out the video of the coworker of Troy driver. That took a lot of guts for that guy. I wanted, well, I'll leave that out. This person is a local and has been for many years um, and has also lived in remote parts of Nevada, which actually would be really good to talk to somebody out there. If somebody wants to contact me sometime, we could just come on a live stream and just talk and just give people an idea. That would be interesting. I just wanted to let you know that if you need any insight on whatever for this case, feel free to reach out. They um, know somebody personally that works in the McEwen mine and said that Troy has a lot of friends at that mine and no one is allowed to even speak of the Naomi case out there. The co-workers are actually defending Troy. That's what this person told me. So I thought that was really interesting. And I figured like it's probably like, I guess, a small town and like even those workers like all know each other, I guess, I'm assuming. Um, the other thing too, is that somebody was talking, I had a couple people tell me about this guy, right? The coworker guy. And some people were, and I saw the comments like, how could he, how could they know each other that well? Or how could he know so much information if he's, they only worked together for three weeks? Well, what this other person told me, um, so this other person said, the one caller said that the coworker is shady because uh, how does he know so much? And they've been working for three weeks. And then this person said to me, so guys working in the same situation, get to know each other fast. They have 12 hour shifts and that doesn't include travel time. And from sorry, travel time to and from sites, that's a minimum of about an hour each plus working in that area. They're probably staying they're doing the work week, so they eat out together, grab drinks. Those guys know each other fast. So the per person basically saying that they they work together all the time, long shifts. They're together just in these, I guess, conditions. Uh, this person actually knows the coworker, and the, another person knows them as well. Um, and that those are the two things I wanted to mention. Uh, I don't know. And the, the coworker thing, like I said earlier, man, my thoughts again, I think he did work with Troy. I think they did work together. The whole firing thing. I, I don't know that I, I still, you know, question to me, it's a question in my head still, if that's the only reason or was there something else? But I mean, I think the most important information would have been just the details of, of Troy, but and who knows if the if the evidence was discarded in different multiple locations. I don't know. But different counties, it seems like. Even though these counties where she was found on and, and it's a grave site, right? It was a shallow was it a shallow grave site? Well, they say from a gravesite. <clears throat> yeah, I believe him too. And and then given the context of what this person said, that this, this one person that emailed me talking about they're really tight knit and that you're not even allowed to talk about this case. I was thinking maybe the coworker was out there talking to people and they didn't like that, you know, or maybe the company just didn't want to be associated. And yeah, over there, they don't like, I've heard multiple people say they don't have to give you a reason to fire you. It's one of those, what did it say? At will States or something at will at will employment. So Florida is, Florida usually will give you a reason, but they don't have to.
except an illegal one or for no reason without incurring legal liability. The employer can terminate you at any time for any reason. So do they have to give you a reason? What I've seen just in my own experience and some of these other jobs, I, I never worked in that type of place, but from what I've seen in other jobs, when places want to get rid of you or they don't like you for a certain reason, they'll find anything just to get rid of you. That's all they need just to right to work, right to work state at will. So even if they want to get rid of you for a personal issue or for some whatever, obviously they're not going to tell you that. So they'll just go and find whatever to get rid of you. His name, uh, let me see. I had it up here. In my inbox. Okay. She sent me this, the guy's name. Oh, it's not showing up on here. On my cell phone, it showed up. Let me see. He posted some videos today. I mean, if you guys want to listen to it, we can listen to it in the background. If not, we leave it alone. I feel uh, some of the people were kind of tired of it already. I mean, I get it. This is it's about Naomi. But at the same time, if he got fired just for that, that is pretty messed up. Okay, so the name is Joel Santillian. For some reason, it only shows up when I look at my Facebook page inbox on my cell phone. If it's not, I'm on the computer. It doesn't. Sh it just shows his, his other name, SD Cali. Yeah, no cause of death yet. None of that. They didn't even really get like a full location. Aaron, what's up, man? Hope you're doing good. Aaron, we still got to link up sometime. I uh, I never got back to you. I was doing a lot, moving and everything. You can't talk about the supervisor at most jobs without a warning. You probably talk to a coworker. That's what I was thinking from that. The messages that I saw, I was like, man, he, maybe he was talking to some people and they went and told these people and they, like the people at the job and they don't want to deal with it. I wonder if Naomi's strong and beautiful family knew this heartbreaking news before the hearing even happened. I'm wondering too, it's possible. Because the thing said that they found a body yesterday. I, I don't know if they told the family that the body was confirmed today. So I don't know if they let them know. Can you replay the video of him possibly in the car? Yeah. Looks like he has a shiny object in his hand. Let me, um, I'm going to play it. Let me just slow it down. That's the only thing I don't like about that video. I Slow it down. Try point two. Go to the car. I 
that's what i wonder too uh one lovely addiction says do you guys believe he was stalking her before he acted on it well i, I mean like i wonder if it was that was the first day or what yeah was it like watching her for several days nerdy says something about not giving a statement at the arraignment. oh you're right you're right tammy did say that so people were criticizing the family let me show that too Hey, yeah, look, like six hours ago, she's saying here, I wish I could tell everyone more about what's going on. So they, they you know, they probably knew. Look, somebody here. Oh. Says huge mistake not making of oh, that was nerdy. <laughs> huge mistake not making a victim impact statement during the bond hearing. And then she said there is a reason. So I mean I don't know if it was that or they just don't want to say things to jeopardize certain things. I don't know. Lola Hernandez, thank you so much for the super chat. Says RP Naomi. This is so sad. Thank you, Ikid Mel. Thanks. Oh. <laughs> Change Twitter to dark mode. How do I do that? That's true, right? Probably for you guys in the dark, it's super bright. I have to go in the settings or something, right? I don't know how to use this Twitter stuff. Display. Oh, no. Lights out. Dim or lights out? Ooh. Like that. Maybe, maybe. Let's see. Everything else is bright though. I have to mess around with that sometime, but I, I do like that better. I can so I can switch all the screens. Oh yeah, let me play the video now, right? Let's do that. Bridge our vehicle. Shelby says she sent a super chat but not seeing it. Oh, I, I think I saw it. It didn't. I don't know where it went. It says you sent me one, but all right, I'll read what you said here though. Uh, now that I lost it. Where's Shelby's message go? Shelby's oh there we go. I sent a super chat but not seeing it. He'll be arraigned on new charges. Okay. Churchill County, yep. Vic said someone mentioned in the live chat that where she was found is like 30 minutes where she was abducted and 30 minutes from his home. Not sure how accurate that is. I mean, they're all relatively not that far from each other. Burnley to, well, it, depend, it depends. Fallon is in that county. Uh, so, I mean, from Fallon to where the vehicle was found to where she, her body was found. It may not even be that far yet. It might be 30 minutes. Possible. And to me, he's definitely leaning over. It looks like, right? 
I mean, I know we talked about this earlier, but seeing it in slow motion. Yeah. Mm-hmm. From Furley, Fernley to Fallon, it's about an hour drive. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, here it says from Fernley the Walmart to Fallon where the vehicle is found is about 30 minutes, 27 minutes. The Walmart address to the truck. Even though technically these are different counties because Fernley is what county? Fernley is... Is Lyon County. That's why we got this joint press thing. So they're really not that far from each other. So Fernley is considered to be in Lyon County. Fallon is part of, um, what are we calling it? Churchill County. Mm. Well, I guess that's it for now. Uh, family says they knew before hearing today a body had been found. Oh, okay, but none of them could bring themselves to speak. I see. That makes sense. Oh, Twitter DMs. Okay, let me see, Jazz. Mm. Okay, let's check this out. Nerdy says we knew she probably was. This was in, this is in quotes, so he didn't say it. This is the he's quoting Tamara, the sister. We knew she was probably dead. They told us that they found a body, and it was like Naomi but that it had not been fully identified yet before the bond hearing. And none of us could bring ourselves to speak about it in court or speak in court today. So that makes sense. Why, why they didn't say anything or whatever. There's another tweet. Uh, not too many windows open. Okay. No, it's the same thing. Okay. Another one. Yeah. This one I saw. He was released. So chore driver heard back from the CA prison system today regarding chore driver's previous sentence for accessory to murder and other charges. He was, he was released from prison in 2012 and re-released from parole supervision in 2014. Hmm. The Brian Enten interview, I think that was the day before that it was done. Uh, Little Joe Blonde says, why did they do the Brian Enten interview? I think that was before. Jazz said he had a full ear in 2014. Oh. So this was the ears incident happened after, right? Mm. 
six. Jen, thank you, Jen. For, I just saw the message. I'm bad with Twitter, like checking the stuff. Um, all right. I guess we'll see what turns up tomorrow. <clears throat> The interview was done Monday, body found Tuesday, identified Wednesday. Okay, Sally, thank you for that. Sally Doll X13, that makes sense. I don't know why we still don't know the story to the ear. I wonder if his family and friends, you haven't seen the picture? I don't know what happened to his ear. Was it like a bitten off or somebody was saying maybe it was a condition? I don't know. I saw a couple of on, on side notes before we head out. <laughs> right. Extend it three hours now. Um, two things, man. Let me see if I can find this real quick. Two other uh, stories. How do I search this stuff? Okay, okay. This real quick. We don't have to go deep into it. I just thought this was kind of peculiar. You guys remember the one-year-old from the other day? Some of you might have heard of this story. I heard about it, but I didn't have a... I think I took that day off. I just needed some myself time. But there was this one-year-old that was found. I think his name was Jose, Jose Lara, Florida. In a septic tank and so and there was a whole presser we don't need to watch the presser but after several bloodhound teams could not find an area where the little boy left his own yard sunday afternoon they started looking around the, an area covered in some bush near where the clean out for the septic tank was located it had been covered some time ago with a piece of wood described by described as an improvised cover Underneath a layer of dirt where the piece of plywood had been there for some time, it appeared that it had rotted to the extent so that when it stepped on, he actually fell in. There's nothing to indicate at this point there's any type of foul play. So supposedly, I think the mother... Oh, the story. I thought the mother went inside or something, left the kid outside. And so this is just odd to me. Uh, the, the septic tank thing, I didn't know... And I thought I downloaded a picture of this because I wanted to share it with you guys. But oh, here it is. I had this from the other day. And I just I just thought about this uh, as precautionary or maybe people with kids or whatever. I didn't know what septic tanks they were doing this. That they were just were some. I don't know. I don't know if it's per se people or companies out there that they just literally cover it up with a piece of wood. And then like. I guess over time, you know, with the weather and, and nature and just everything here, you know, everywhere really, but Florida too, you know, this stuff starts to rot away. And so I think they were saying that there was like some grass on top of it, but the wood was right under it. And so this kid, he's not going mean, to, especially at that age, you know, he's just walking around playing. And I think they had to empty out the septic tank. I'll play the, the video clip. A nearly 24-hour search where a missing Putnam County toddler ended with the discovery of his body in a septic tank behind his home. It appears a combination of things lined up for this tragic, tragic outcome to occur. West Tues Dave McDaniel has the latest from the scene of the search, plus what we know so far about this investigation. That there's, there's never an opportunity to leave them unsupervised or to take your eyes off of them. Otherwise, something unfortunately tragic like this. Is that happen. illegal? 18 month old yeah. Jose Lara vanished from his own yard south of Crescent City Sunday afternoon. Bloodhounds could never latch onto a track showing he got very far from home. It's my unfortunate task today to tell you that the search for Jose Lara has ended with the recovery of Jose's body. He was found when searchers started carefully looking at the septic tank under some brush and some dirt. At some point in time, 
Someone had improvised a cover for the septic cleanout from wood. Just beneath the uh, layer of dirt, there was actually a, a piece of plywood that had been there for some time, and it appeared it had rotted to the to the extent that whenever he stepped on it, he actually fell in. And unfortunately, investigators believe the toddler managed to fall through, and the board didn't have obvious signs that he had, like it had enough spring in it to stay in position to the naked eye. First responders from all across the area arrived here, hoping for a better outcome. Mary and Evolution counties helped in the search from the air. Anywhere from 120 to 140 first responders also helped. Neighbors also hope to pitch in. This is the time that we need to get together and support each other. We were here last night to help out if we could find them, but we couldn't. And while the investigation isn't over, there's nothing to indicate at this point that there was any type of uh, foul play suspected, but it is still an active investigation. In Putnam County, Dave McDaniel, West 2 News. I don't know. So that, that was kind of awkward. Not, not awkward, but just weird, bizarre, sad, crazy. And I didn't know people were doing that with septic tanks. And so it just kind of makes you think. Because uh, I, I remember when I was at my mother's and I was living there, They have, there's a septic tank there. But, like, it's covered. Like, they, it's actually underground, but there's, like, a thing. Like, it's like this whole, it's, it's a whole fiasco when these people come out. You got to pay a couple hundred dollars, I think, like, five, six hundred dollars. They come out. The thing is even underground, but once they get the dirt out of the way, then there's there's something there. I don't know. That was a thing. And so, you know, just to be cautious when you're, you're letting your kids go out and play or anything in anybody's backyard. You just let you go to somebody's house and you don't even know that they're doing that. Another thing real quick. Um, I took a screenshot of this. You guys remember the, the, the uh, maybe I should get his name. Let's get his name real quick. Um, this is another story that I was going to cover, but I didn't get to cover. I, I briefly mentioned it during a live stream, but the 14 year old Tyree Sampson that fell from that free fall ride uh, here in Florida again, again, Florida. So I saw, I was seeing like weird, interesting articles. I just took snapshots when I was on my phone. And let me see if I can just look it up real quick what they're saying about that maybe i can pull it up it says harness was still down and locked after the teen fell all right so how did he fall i know there wasn't a seatbelt in that thing but then also there was a concern about his weight and that he wasn't supposed to be on those rides. Even his own father bought up that concern. Like, should he have even been on those rides? And so his cousin came out and said that Tyree was denied entry to two other rides at the park due to his weight. So, I don't know. I just think about it because I saw the video. It's just kind of bizarre to see that happen. And I just don't know how he even... And apparently there's fake GoFundMe accounts for this kid too. For the kid in the family. Nothing surprises me anymore on the internet. GoFundMe pulls down fake accounts for Tyree. Scamming people out of money is supposedly to be used for funeral costs. Um, let's see the cousin, cousin, There's another crazy Florida story. I'm thinking I'm actually covering it tomorrow. I don't want to say yet because I, I don't want to say for sure that's what it's going to be. And, I, and actually, I think I'm just going to end it off here with this one. I'm not going to go any further into it, but I just wanted to mention just kind of weird, bizarre death. I, I am going to, I'm thinking of doing a story of a woman. You guys probably already know the, the four-year-old was found. Whoever follows that 
the woman still missing her vehicle is found they're kind of looking at like this ex-boyfriend or something i haven't sat down and looked at the videos and articles a friend of the woman dm me and was asking me like oh can you cover it and stuff she was sending me links and articles and stuff like that so i might take a look at that for tomorrow um just to keep things mixing of course we're going to keep following naomi um probably latched probably latched as he fell out trying to hold on for his life yeah that's a horrible way just to go man it's a horrible uh i just can't imagine those septic tanks are just nasty too man it's just Supposedly those ride workers claim they checked. I don't know if that's true or not. Supposedly they claim they checked. And not and the one article's claiming that um uh, see the screenshot I took. Free fall accident report. Free fall accident report, they're claiming that uh the thing was still locked. That's what I was talking to my friend on the phone about this. I was like, but how is it locked? Damn, check this out real quick. Hold on. <laughs> Stretch this out three hours. All right, guys, I'm going now. Investigates has new information that may shine new light on the death of a teen who fell from an international drive attraction. The free fall and a neighboring ride, the slingshot, remain closed following the boy's death last Thursday night. Western News investigative reporter Greg Fox is live outside of Icon Park. And Greg, you are focusing now on the seat restraints. Exactly. When you think about it, in an ideal world, everybody who boards a thrill ride at any theme park anywhere across America uh, would be able to have an individual seat that's tailored just for them, no matter whether you're tall or short, big or small. But the reality is that's not the way it is, as millions of people board rides uh, like the free fall around the country every day. But what we do know is that the operator's manual provided by the manufacturer to the owners of this ride clearly spells out items that deal with weight and size and safety. It's unknown when or if the free fall ride at Icon Park will reopen following the fatal fall that claimed the life of 14-year-old Tyree mm. Sampson. I'm going to say we locked after you fell. to investigates has been going through state records, including the ride manual from the manufacturer. It not only reveals a maximum passenger weight of 130 kilograms, roughly 287 pounds. In bold print, it reads, limitation, large people. Be careful when seeing if large guests fit into the seats. Check that they fit within the contours of the seat and the bracket fits properly. If this is not so, do not let this person ride. An attorney for the boy's family tells us he weighed over 300 pounds. You've got to uh, be able to hold smaller people and large people. And Bill Kitchen is president of U.S. Thrill Rides. He says the industry is constantly debating who may be too big or small for some rides. So you can only encompass a certain weight and certain breadth uh, and height. And uh, so you do the best you can to make it safe for everybody. At Free Falls ticket window, the minimum height is posted. Nothing about weight. There's no mention of it in the accident report from the supervisor who wrote, free fall was coming down the tower when the magnets, which act like brakes, engaged. The patron came out of the seat. Harness was still in a down and locked position when the ride stopped. ASTM International creates standards for ride safety, including restraint systems. ASTM's guidebook reads, ride operators should conduct a patron suitability. That's what somebody was saying. It's just a crotch bump there, right? I showed this image the other day. Uh, here's one. I don't know what the other one is. This is a picture that they took. There's no, that's what they were saying. There's no like seatbelt. It's just, I guess the thing that comes over you and then this like little bump or whatever. There was another picture. Oh yeah, this is what it, some of the other rides or at different places it actually has like a like a seatbelt thing it has the bump you got the thing that comes over i guess you got the little bump and then you got like a i guess a seatbelt 
but still, I guess if there's nobody there to really enforcing the weight or regulations, you know, I'm, you know, I don't know. Ability assessment, including factors related to age and physical size. And a 2016 study by Old Dominion University examining ride restraints concluded each ride has unique features and when combined with human attributes such as age, size, weight and physical shape in statistically rare cases may produce rider ejection. Mm. Earlier today and also yesterday, I reached out to both the owner of Freefall and also the manufacturer of the ride. Our messages were not returned. We did see uh, just a short while ago what appeared to be a handful of people in there that are inspecting the ride. They may be with either one or both of the companies, as well as the state inspectors that have been here since last Thursday. Live in Orange County, Greg Fox, West 2 News. All right. Yeah, I guess I'm going to call it here. Trying to get some rest. But uh, uh, yeah, thank you guys for coming through tonight. Appreciate it. Uh, condolences to Naomi's family. Horrible stuff. They have a they have a GoFundMe. I had I had the link previously. I sent something the other day. I don't have it in this one description. I think they exceeded the amount though. But in case you wanted to look at it or read it, I'll just put it in the description. Um, hmm. See. Yeah. They exceeded almost twice the amount. Uh you know, I don't I don't but if you want to look at it, I'll put the link. The link here. And yeah, we'll see we'll see what happens tomorrow. Gonna try to get some rest, you know, whether there's updates, there's still hearings coming up. Uh for this guy Troy. And uh and then we're, we'll see about this other woman in Florida that's not looking good. Alright, thank you guys. Appreciate it, man. Hit like on the way out. Have a good night. Peace. Adios. Get some rest.